and still fresh as a daisy. Well, that was a pretty good entrance. Oh, very good. I thought, I thought it was excellent. <laughs> Made a bit of a meal of it, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 60 next week. How oh, does it don't feel? mention it. I can't think. Oh, don't. I don't feel 60. I, I feel about 37. Yes. Well, I've been 37 for the last 10 years. <laughs> well, you're great. Now, do you think there's anything that you've missed out on? Any regrets, things that you haven't done in your 60 years? Oh, I've never missed a thing. You no, I've done a thing twice. <laughs> 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 but looking back on it, you've had your ups and downs. Do you ever think now, oh, yeah. gosh, I missed out on something then? No, no, Janet, not at all. No, I've loved every minute of it. I wouldn't have done anything else at all. Well, I hope you're going to enjoy the show, because so. over the last couple of months, we've been out on the road trying to capture what makes Larry the person that he is today. Because for most of us, Larry Grayson is a performer we've seen a lot of over the last ten years. But you may not know that his dream of appearing on the stage started no less than 55 years ago when he was just a small boy. Larry's school days were spent here at Abbey Green in Nuneaton, and he recalls that he wasn't the smartest of pupils in any sense. Larry, what were you like at school? Were you the teacher's pet? Oh, no. You no, weren't? No, anything but, no. <laughs> no, I was, I was a mess. You were a mess. A mess. You must have been very tall. No, no, not really, no. I was very thin. Yeah. I was very thin and very pale. Why? Pale as death. Yeah. I had every illness in the book. <laughs> Twice. You see, I wasn't very fond of school. I didn't like it and, and uh, Did the other kids take the mickey out of you? Certainly not. I wouldn't <laughs> dare. <laughs> no, I used to... And I, I, I was very smart, really. I, I'm a Virgo, you know. <laughs> and right from a child, I, wasn't, I liked a clean shirt and a nice tie and, and yes. my shoes had to be polished. Yes. And the kids would say, yeah, you know. It's just say, oh, you show off, you do, big head. Now, I've got oh, a surprise for here. It's the admission register. Yeah. Oh, dear, dear, dear. And you're going to be here. William Starkey, yes, I knew him. Oh, but Charles Bates. Oh, Charles Bates went on to be very clever, I think. I say, Dorothy Cartwright, she was a clever girl. Now, this there is we you. are, William Hammonds, there we are. And it's got my real name at the side, look, Sully White. William Sully White, but it Hammonds. And you've got now, you more see, names than anyone else. Well, exactly. Well, you see, William Sully White was my real name, but you see, the people that adopted me, living down the road, it was called Mr and Mrs Hammonds. So, of course, they, and I never knew that was in this book, you know. We asked the current pupils at Abbey Green to show Larry how they see him. Oh, this is excellent. Very, oh, my goodness, me. Is this me? Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can tell. Look at the glasses. And what about his hands? Show me how you've done his hands. Look at the big smile there, look, Janet. Yes, but what about these red eyes? Well, of course, that's how I'm in the morning when I get home. <laughs> you haven't seen me in the morning, have you? <laughs> Aren't they good? No, it's, it's the Maypole. And we couldn't let Larry leave his old school without giving him the chance to show us the only thing he admitted to being any good at, a prance round the Maypole. <laughs> that must be the original Maypole. Oh, yes. It's got to be. The great day itself was May the 1st, where we had, where we had the, uh, the maypole, the dars. Then they all came out in little white pumps and uh, an S-bell, which got from Woolworths, six months, you see. And uh, right, I loved it, you see. I was very thin. So, of course, I used to dance like this. Because <laughs> I can't do it now. <laughs> so, could I borrow this one? My goodness. Oh, I say. Oh, happy days. <laughs> right. <laughs> Goodness I me. think you nearly strangled a, poor, a couple of poor little children. I, th there. I did a couple. I, I think they did. I, I think a couple was taken away quickly. <laughs> <laughs> can you 
Can you offer any reason as to why you wanted to dress up and perform from such an early No, age? no, not at all. No. I always wanted to do it ever since I could remember when. I never wanted to do anything else at all. I just wanted to be on the stage and, and that was it. You don't think it was anything to do with being adopted or wanting to get attention? Yeah, I don't or... think so, no. You no, just wanted no, everybody no. to notice you, though? Uh, no, I was just born in me. I just wanted to do it. I didn't know how I was going to get there. You know, I couldn't sing or dance, as you know. I can't do anything. But I just wanted to, uh, to be on the stage, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did your family think about this? I mean, did they think oh, this is something we've got to kind of encourage or something that's a bit worrying? Well, they said, uh, ignore him. He'll grow out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be all right. It's just, it's just a phase he's going through. <laughs> Was there any job that you wanted to do apart from being on the stage? Have you ever done anything else? Yes, I went to a shoe shop called The Benefit and worked for two days. <laughs> you tried to vlog shows? Yeah, I, I saw somebody at Wellington. I couldn't find it. I, I saw the same shoe, you know, two lefts. <laughs> and, uh, but when I was in the shop, I knew right away it wasn't for me. I thought, I, I can't do this. So it was the stage for you? Well, yes, yes. But I as suppose. you said, you couldn't act, you couldn't sing, no. and you couldn't dance. No, no. Now, before he was out of short trousers, Larry had decided to make the giant and somewhat formidable step from the amateur shows that he was giving in the family washroom to his first professional steps on the stage. And Larry Grayson made his entry into show business in a working men's club in Nuneaton. This is Five Street. And it was here where I played my first date at the, the, the working men's club here. And I got five shillings. There it is, right there. That date was at a wedding reception, and many of his old friends from those days remember it well. Larry's appearance was as Billy Breen, one of an act called the Four Very Lights, and the lady responsible for persuading him to make his stage debut was Frida. How long did it take you to teach him? There was one particular song, wasn't there? Oh, the bushes at the bottom of the garden. How long did that take to teach him? Oh, about three weeks, I think. But, and I said, now, you can't get those notes, so what you do, you just say them, you say. Pod's got a garden, take us at your pride, cultivated bushes at the bottom just to hide, views of ugly houses, chimney pots and such. Now there is a forest and we thank him very much. <laughs> By the light of the moon, how the couples, they all spoon and they don't say, I beg your pardon. And the old Tom Cat takes the tabby next door. <laughs> In the bushes at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Even in those early days with the very lights, Larry couldn't resist getting into drag, a routine which became a feature of his act on and off for the next 30 years. Here's a poster from the period. Larry's in the middle. My name's Tangerine. And this is the I song always Larry always played. used as a finale. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we should have had Geraldo. Well, there are eyes of... Wait, wait for me. Look at me. Look. Watch the lips move. <laughs> and I've seen toast to tangerine, raised in every bar across the Argentine. <laughs> this is Betty Davis. Yes, yeah, she has the boys in a world, but her heart belongs to one girl. Here comes the close-up. <laughs> Her heart belongs to right hand <laughs> When the fresh-faced Larry Grayson started his first professional tour after the war in little Devon villages like Christo here, as part of a company calling itself Stars of Tomorrow, his performance took the locals completely by surprise. When I did, we used to all come on, uh, with Mr Leslie liked us all on at first in our suits, you see. And uh, then I used to change very quickly into drag. 
And I used to... Sh shall I show? Shall yeah. I show? Sh OK. Well, I, I used to... Uh, remember, I was younger then. <laughs> I put my arms around like this, and the music was playing. I'd come... Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and the, the, the shock. And I used to go into... Um, <clears throat> oh, what has happened to me? I'm the silliest one. I'm the son of a gun, and I'm riding on high. <laughs> Have you ever seen a man in a frock before? No, I've never. What was your first reaction? That... I thought he was a bit queer. <laughs> I'd be more scarf and he'd just fling it around his neck. <laughs> you know, and he'd twirl it around. And, yeah, it was quite interesting and very good. I really enjoyed it. Into the dance. <laughs> Can't do it now. <laughs> it was... Uh, <clears throat> something like that. And when you think... If you knew of all the years, of the hopes and dreams and tears, you'd know it didn't happen overnight. 212 years comes next Thursday. <laughs> No, it didn't. No, 34 no. years. 34 years. In and out of frocks. In and out of frocks. And uh, all through the war, you know, for the shel in the shelters and... Did you enjoy and... life on oh, the yes, road? Oh, yes, of course I did, yes. Oh, I know the damp beds and <laughs> shorter <laughs> money. Oh, I never gave it. All that it. pressing. There must be a lot of ironing. Oh, yeah, but I still do it. Do you remember this? Fine, fine. But yes. you two are very good pals, aren't you? Very yes, we've been for a long time. We are more time. than pals. Yes. We're more than pals. <laughs> well, dare I ask what you've got in common? Uh, no. Well, we, we're just very good friends. We have a lot in common, haven't we, Nolly? We, you know, like... Well, the first thing that made me love Larry was he was the only person that wasn't rude about Crossroads. Well, and we've been firm friends ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to leave the two of them alone together to recreate a duet they first sang on television on Shut That Door ten years ago. OK, Larry, now okay, do we'll best. do it. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck to you too. You Here start. I'll start. Right. I hear singing and there's no one there Blossoms and the trees are bare All day long I seem to walk on air I wonder why, I wonder why I Your head on my shoulder, sleep and bow we're going to look at what fame has done to Larry. Like most things to do with Larry, it happened in a very funny way. Whilst playing the Festival Hall in Paynton in 1971, a local clairvoyant, Madame Credo, correctly predicted that within a year, Larry would rocket from the bottom of the bill and go on to star in top television shows like these. I was lying down and my friend Everard... <laughs> He came, listen, he came in, and he was all flushed. He was flushed. I said, Everard, I said. I, 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 I said, Everard, I said, I've never seen you with flushed like that before, I said. Doctors, we sang in the choir together. <laughs> before your voice broke, and that's another story. But he was <laughs> just a minute, just a moment, just a moment. <laughs> What's the matter with this? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you may very well say, oh dear. There's no good blaming me. I'm only the conductor. Well, your, feather, your feather's blocking me out back here. <laughs> oh, just wait, there's something on me. Wait a minute. This <laughs> is alive. All right, then. <laughs> Can you analyse why you were so popular on television no, no. in the 1970s? I mean, from 1947, playing that yeah, village yes, hall in Cristo, yeah, you waited yeah. all that time till 1971 yeah. to get on television. Yeah, I know. Why and weren't it, we ready for you before? I don't, I don't know. I, I have no idea. But somebody said, hang on. You must hang on. And it all led to playing at the London Palladium, didn't That's it? That's right, it was one yes. of your biggest dreams. Uh, my greatest was to be at the London Palladium. Everybody in show business wants to play at the London Palladium. And um, when I got there, well, I was only that big on the bill then, but it was wonderful. Well, we've asked some of the people that you've got to know since then for their view of the real Larry Grayson. I'm just wild about Larry. He's just like honey from a bee. He can't be 60. He's just a pixie. I'm just wild about, cannot do without Larry Bank on TV. It's lovely to be a product of the people, and uh, you know, he never lets them down. He's always there at it. Who shut that door? Very naughty. Very naughty indeed, but he does. Well, he makes me laugh. The sort of a fella you could meet anywhere, in any circumstance, he'd always be the same. His dressing room door is never shut, it's always open. And there's always laughter coming from it. He adores talking about the, the great stars of the past. And uh, he just revels in every aspect of the business. I, I've never really actually heard him talk about anything else. He's always sent me flowers on my birthday and that kind of thing. I don't know for how long. I can't remember. He's exactly the same now as he was 28 years ago. And he's just a charming guy. I used to come in and vacuum my dressing room. Because he's so clean and tidy. And, you know, I'd have these big cheese rolls and the cheese would end up on the floor. And he used to, he'd go, come in and do all the vacuuming and all the rest of it. Shut, Shut that door. Look at this mug. Hair spec, there spec. Watch a gay day. <laughs> I, oh, I love him to do it, yes. You love it? Oh, yes, I do. I mean, when uh, Mike Yarwood and that very clever boy that works here called Dustin G, when he uh, impersonates me, I fall about. I really do. It makes me laugh. Now, are there any kind of drawbacks to the immense kind of fame that you've got from being on television? I mean, you must be recognised everywhere you, you oh, go. Do yes. you mind? No, I love it, really. <laughs> uh, if I don't feel good, I don't like it so much, but, but I, I, I love it all. It's what I've worked for, it's what I've always wanted. I love people to shout, where's Everard? How's Slack Alice? <laughs> and I, I, I love it, I love it. doesn't bother that. you a bit? Not a bit, no. Well, as we're about to see, being a star hasn't changed Larry's life that much. For a start, he still lives in Nuneaton. This is Clifton Road, Janet, where I lived uh, until 1972. That's the house there, look. That one there, look, 52. Yeah. I lived there. My manager said to me, you're going to be a star. You've got to move to a bigger house at the other end of town. He said, well, I don't want to go, because I loved it there. I've never envied people with swimming pools and, and big houses. I don't want all that. I, it's a home. My sister Fran and I, my little dog, live here. And it's, it's small. And in the winter, we, have a, we moved out. Yeah. We, have a, we have a fire, a cold fire. And it's warm, and it's... It's a home. I don't want a show place where people come and say, oh, isn't it marvellous? Oh, Larry Grayson's home. It's <laughs> rubbish. I don't want it. All I want is a home where I can come back to and sit down and be me. Because I'm as common as dirt, you know. And you've got all you your know. little knickknacks Oh, out. yes. In the, in the summer, we have a net curtain there because uh, it gets very busy and people come uh, in cars and, and uh, they think we can't see them and they get the kids out of the cars and plant them on that gun there. Oh, there's the dustman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they, they uh, set all the kids out and then they take a picture and the kids are going like that, you see. Like, Larry lives here. And they think, we, we, you know, we, we don't know, we can't see, but we, we, we can. This, you see this here, look? Yeah. I went to the Wedgwood factory and I made that. Look, it's got Larry on, it's got Larry on. You there, made that? I made it, yes. It's a bit wonky. It doesn't matter, I am wonky myself. And <laughs> so they wanted to put it in the museum to say, Larry Grayson made this, you know, for when I'm dead. <laughs> You say, you know, but I said, you're not. It tells me quite a lot about you, really. And this is, I bought that of you uh, in a <laughs> shop in Kensington some time ago. I thought, oh, it's just like Janet. People. My bottom's much nicer than that. Uh, pardon? I said, my bottom's much nicer than that. That'll be cut. <laughs> and, uh, now, these things in here, Janet, the, the... <laughs> 
Would you just talk amongst yourselves for a moment? They, they... <laughs> It'll be all right on the night. <laughs> no, they, they... <laughs> right. We made it. Now, these things here, Janet, look, the, first of all, that was sent to me by a man from Dudley, who, who, that's all plasticine, look, they even got the glasses, though. But he has to be kept in here, otherwise he'll di disintegrate, you see. <laughs> and, uh, the... Not like the real thing. Pardon? Not like the real thing. <laughs> and this was when I, that was, uh, that's very precious to me, but, uh, a friend bought me that when I was in uh, Aladdin at Bristol. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to rub it three times and something happens. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a daily come in? And I said, no, because I like to do it myself. It, we did have a lady who used to come in to do the work, but I used to go around after and do it all over again. So I have the radio on, but uh, normally it bothers me. So I, 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 I go around like, la da da, like, like Hilda Ogden. <laughs> la da da, da 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 da. I don't know the words, I just go, I, I, I start like, um, I'm in the mood for love. Then I forget the words, and I go, la da 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 da. <laughs> who clears up after Larry is his sister Fan, still caring for him after 60 years together. Fan, is it hard looking after Larry? I mean, he's always losing his glasses, isn't he? Yes, regular. <laughs> he's on the floor. Have you spent your day going around picking up, picking his, up his glasses? Yes. Yeah. But Fan, he does a bit of housework, doesn't he? Oh, he does the overhead. Yes. I do the washing. I do, I do I'm most washing things. Up. But down in Torquay, Larry has a secret retreat that he likes to escape to as often as he can. Well, the thing is, you see, it's like being abroad, living here in Torquay, and uh, from my home in the Midlands, it's only three hours down the motorway. And uh, whenever I think about it, I, I just get in the car and I say, down to Torquay, and if the weather's bad, we just pack up and go back to the Midlands. This is all I want. It suits me here, and it suits my sister. And uh, see, my sister, she's in her seventies now, and so we don't start trips there all over the place. Mm. And when we get the deck chairs out here and the sun's shining, well, I, I could pretend I'm anywhere, you know. Yeah. Anywhere at all. I sit here, we, we sit here like um, Ricardo Cortez and Mary Pickford. Not many people know my address here. Very few know my f telephone number. So it's a, re it's a place to get away from, a retreat. I, I certainly don't want to get away from people, but it, sometimes you do. Everyone wants to be Well, if it's the that. Beverly Hills at all, Kay, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it is, yes. <laughs> The Beverly Hills of Torquay. Well, this is an international show. We've now been joined by one of Larry's close friends and neighbours in Devon, the writer and broadcaster, Mr Arthur Marshall. Arthur, it's very nice to have you here tonight. <laughs> You're great pals, I know. What is, it, what is it about Larry that makes you laugh? Well, first of all, he makes me laugh almost uncontrollably. Anything You do a does. lot of giggling together. I've noticed that. <laughs> You set each but other off. See, the marvellous thing about him is that he's absolutely genuine. That's what comes over. There's no nonsense, no makeup, no rubbish. It's all the real him. I've noticed that only one of you has got to say the name of somebody from a soap opera, opera like oh. Dallas or Dinner, and it starts the pair of you off. Or silent movies. Particularly the films. Yeah. Rod LaRock. Of course. Nils Haster. <laughs> Vilma Banky. Yes. Laura LaPlante. Zazu Pips. Yes. Slim Somerville. Colleen Moore. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and we go on. <laughs> well, there's only one way to finish a show like this, and we've asked an old show business friend who once shared the same bill with Larry, and who also just happens to share the same birthday, to help us out. Yes, it's he of the desert song, John Hanson. Oh, <laughs> 